Good morning, everybody. It's Saturday. Almost lunchtime. And I've been cleaning and cleaning. Ugh. I'm tired of cleaning. Have on my apron, my cleaning apron. Not my school smock. I don't feel like doing any cleaning. I thought I'd spend some time with you folks. You know what I like to do when I don't feel like doing any work? I like to read. And I got new books today. They just came, so I can't wait to read them. I thought I'd share one with you. It reminds me of you folks, too. And it's called The Word Collector by Peter Reynolds. The Word Collector. I, I'm sure after I feel this book, I'm going to read this book. I'm going to feel much better. Can't go outside, you know. No friends over. Ugh. So let's read the story. Collectors collect things. Some people collect stamps. Some people collect coins. Others collect rocks. Some collect art. Some collect bugs. Others collect baseball cards. Some people collect comic books. Miss Vicky, she collects shells and rocks on the beach. Me, I love to collect art supplies, because you know I love my art. But Jerome, what did Jerome collect? You might even get it ready, I don't know. Jerome collected words. He would have pieces of paper and he would put words on. Here he is. This word he collected is wonder. Doesn't he look like a nice boy? He collected words he heard. He was talking to his friend. My trip to Peru was perfectly pleasant. Certain words caught his attention. I've never been to Peru. Probably you have. He collected words he saw. Willow tea shop. He wrote the word willow. Certain words jumped out at him. He collected words he read. Certain words just popped off the page. He read The Wizard of Oz and he liked the word emerald. So does William the Leprechaun. Green on the Emerald Isle. Short and sweet words, two syllable treats. The two, um, spark and bloom and drift and dream. Treasure, motif, whisper, candid, hover, glimmer. Look, looks like he's pasting some in a book. And multi-syllable words that sounded like little song. Guacamole, kaleidoscope, wonderful geometry, symphony. Here he is. It's true, some words are like that. There were words he didn't know the meaning at first, but they were marvelous to say. Aromatic, phosphorus, I can't even say it myself. <gasps> Effervescent. <laughs> there were words whose sounds were perfectly suited to their meaning. Molasses, torrential, Tyrannosaurus Rex, Smudge, Bellow. Jerome filled his scrapbooks with more and more of his favorite works. Look at this. Jerome was very busy. Jerome's collection grew. He began organizing them. There was a book for dreamy words, a book for science words and sad words and action words and poetic words. Oh, whoo, lot to carry. But one day, as Henry was transporting them, carrying them to go somewhere, Jerome slipped and his words went flying. 
check this out. Oh no. I guess he didn't paste them in the book. He just put them in the book. Poor Jerome. As he began to pick them up, he noticed his collections had become jumbled. Big words were next to little words. Sad words were next to dreamy words. Hmm, I wonder what Jerome will do next. Jerome began stringing the words together, words that he had not imagined being side by side, like whisper and symphony and electric and peace and savor and dream and cascading and stars. Look, doesn't this remind you of school? And Dylan, when we would hang your artwork, mm, I'm thinking of an idea. He used his words to write poems. He used his poems to make songs. They moved and they delighted. Look, all of his friends liked his compositions. Some of the simplest words are the most powerful. I understand. I'm sorry. Thank you. You matter. Jerome eagerly collected more and more of his favorite words. Peace, molecule, harmony, bungalow, brilliance, Waterfall, hugs, thanks, all kinds of words. He looks happy again now, doesn't he? The more words he knew, the more clearly he should share with the world what he was thinking and feeling and dreaming. Look at that. Uh-oh. That's a whole lot of words. One breezy afternoon, Jerome climbed the highest hill, pulling a wagon packed with his word collection. That must have been heavy going up that hill. He smiled as he emptied his collection of words into the wind. He wanted to share them with everybody. Look at all them. Maybe when we can go outside, <laughs> you might find one of his words. He saw children in the valley below, scurrying about, collecting words from the breeze. Look, they're so happy. This little girl, her word says hope. Jerome had no words to describe how happy that made him. because he made other people happy, right? Reach for your own words. Tell the world who you are and you will make it better. Peter Hamilton Reynolds. The end. Oh, I like this story. I like this story very much, but this story gave me an idea. If you were in school, well, you could write your words and we could hang them on our clothesline in school. But here's what I'm thinking. You could do that in ho at home. You know how you all are doing your homework. Not only the homework I give you, but that the moms and dads give you. You could be a word collector and ask your mom or your dad if you could make put a string somewhere and you could hang the words on there. Or not, maybe you could take them on a refrigerator. And you could be a word collector, just like Jerome. I wonder how many words you could collect. Hmm, I bet you could collect a lot of words. Maybe a great big bag, just like Jerome. I don't know. Maybe, then you could come to Dylan 
and you could share those words with everybody. That'd be cool. Look at all these words. So that's an idea. Collect words and hang them up. Oh, I bet you you would find some really good words. Words that even Jerome wouldn't be able to find. Hmm. <sighs> Reading that story made me feel so much better. But you know what? I think I have to get back to work. Love you. Ciao for now. Be good.